you've watched some of my other videos, you know I spent an awful lot of time and money trying to make motors that would put out more energy than they used. And a lot of my ideas were inspired by a gentleman named Joseph Newman who had claimed he would made a uh, motor that put out more energy than it used. Well, I was thinking about some of my early experiments and I wanted to share them with you guys because I, I believe I could save you a lot of time and money if you hear me out here. Now, if, if you read Joe's book or followed his theories, one of his main ideas of electromagnetic motor design and how to increase its efficiency is that you've got to add more wire to your coils. In fact, if, if you look at that idea, it looks, it looks like a fail-proof way to make extra energy because what, what Joe would say in his book, and this isn't just Joe's idea, I believe this follows along with conventional electronic theory, <clears throat> that if you were to have, let's say, a coil of wire with one turn of a wire going here, and you had one amp of current going through it, you're going to get a very weak magnetic field. But if you increase the amount of turns, let's say you have one amp of current going through 50 turns of wire, you're going to get a magnetic field strength that's 50 times stronger than the field you'd have coming off the coil with just one turn. And if you really want to take that to extreme, if you have a coil that's got, let's say, 400,000 turns and, and one amp going through it. In theory, your magnetic field strength is supposed to be 400,000 times stronger than the field strength coming off the single turn here. Now, that's true to a point. You can't have a coil with too few turns in it with motor design, but I found out when you increase the turns beyond a certain point, it doesn't actually benefit you. And let me explain what I discovered here. <clears throat> Based on the idea that I was going to be able to get more more um, power out of the motor if I increased the size of my coil, I wound a huge coil that was 30 pounds and it had number 30 gauge wire in it. So it took from morning till night just to wind this thing on a rotating spindle. And I, I finished this coil and I placed my magnets inside and they were all on a shaft and it looks something like this. Of course, the coil was much thicker, but picture the coil being wound in an oval shape, and I had all these rare earth magnets on one shaft with a shaft going down the center of these things. And so these magnets would be spinning perpendicular in reference to the coil. So if you looked at it from a side view, you'd see something like this. So this would be a top view here. Now, I, I thought the more magnets I add to this armature, the faster this thing's going to turn or at least more power it'll have. And what surprised me was that the more magnets I added, the slower it would turn. Now, here's what I discovered in the process of doing all these experiments. Let's just say for theory's sake that I set up these magnets so each one has its own shaft. So in other words, magnet A can turn and magnet B can turn while the rest of these are held stationary. What I'd find out, if I'd hold the rest of these magnets so they couldn't turn, these two magnets would speed up. It didn't matter what the variation was. If I held half the magnets, the other half would go faster than if I had all the magnets in there. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, that was due to the fact that there's more weight there. Well, no, that wasn't the case. When we're talking about rare earth and neodymium magnets, we're not talking about a whole lot of extra weight. I mean, the, the thing slowed down to the point where I couldn't help but see that there were built-in governing effects that were going to stop it. For example, what I didn't realize is when you create a magnetic field, anytime you allow it to do a little bit of work, even if it's just to push two of these magnets, it's going to have less torque on the rest of these magnets here because this act field actually gets used up. That was something that really surprised me and I was disappointed to see that was the case. Somebody else explained to me that part of the reason it can't go beyond a certain speed is when this thing turns as a generator, as these magnets are turning, as soon as these magnets approach a speed that would uh, generate the source supply voltage, it would actually cause it to slow down there. So I know some people have upped the voltage and got these things to turn faster and they put the special commutator on it and the whole bit. Well, let me add that I had built the special commutators and 
just in case you didn't know it, there came a point where Joe was saying that special commutator was no longer necessary. I had one commutator that would switch polarity into the coil every 180 degrees of rotation to keep constant uh, torque applied to the armature. Anyway, uh, one last thing you might want to try here if you want to sort of verify what I'm saying without spending a lot of money. Take two permanent magnet DC motors. Hook them in series so they're both turning off one power source. Now if you grab the shaft of one of these motors and prevent it from turning, you'll notice a shaft on the other one speeds up. And I think that verifies the same principle that I discovered here. You try to utilize this huge magnetic field you've created. It's not like it's just this invariable magnetic field that stays at a constant rate. You try to, you try to um, allow it to turn all these magnets at once uh, it'll slow down or if you try to stop let's say let's say you stopped all these magnets here from turning the ones I'm covering up these other two magnets will spin much faster so anyway I, I hope that makes sense it's kind of hard to do these videos quickly like this and speak clearly and unfortunately I don't have a pause button on this uh, YouTube so anyway thanks a lot for listening hope you enjoy